Hey, do you know David McKnight, the author of The Power of Zero? Well, he's here to talk about the comparison of an IUL and a Roth IRA. Listen. Hey folks, I'm best-selling author David McKnight. Today I'm going to compare and contrast the Roth IRA and Index Universal Life or IUL. At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you which one makes the most sense for your financial portfolio. You may have had someone approach you with the idea of an Index Universal Life as a replacement or a substitution for the Roth IRA. As a result, you may be wondering if one is better than the other. To get a feel for this, let's examine the benefits and drawbacks of both approaches. Approaches. As I do so, I'm going to evaluate each alternative according to five different criteria. Contribution limits, income limitations, liquidity, protection, and expenses. First, let's talk about contribution limits. We know the Roth IRA does have contribution limits. That's $6,000 per year if you're younger than 50 and $7,000 per year if you're older than 50. Index Universal Life, by comparison, has much more generous contribution limits. These levels are typically tied to a death benefit, so your only real constraint is how much death benefit a given life insurance company allows you to have. The bigger the death benefit, the bigger your bucket, and the more money you can put into that bucket. I have clients that contribute $50 a month, and I have clients that contribute $200,000 per year and everywhere in between. For this one, I'd have to say Advantage IUL. Next, let's talk about income limitations. First, can Bill Gates contribute to a Roth IRA? No, how come he makes too much money? You start making north of $144,000 as a single person or $214,000 as a married couple, you can no longer contribute to a Roth IRA. None of those rules apply to index universal life. For this one, I'd have to say, once again, advantage IUL. Okay, folks, it's time for the Power of Zero question of the day. Which do you prefer, the Roth IRA or Index Universal Life? Okay, next, let's talk about liquidity. The Roth IRA has immediate liquidity on any contributions that you make. That's because you've made those contributions with after-tax dollars, so you've already paid your taxes on that money. However, to withdraw any growth on that Roth IRA, you'll have to wait at least five years since you contribute your first dollar to any Roth IRA or until 59 and a half, whichever is later. For example, if you made your first contribution to a Roth IRA at age 58, you'd have to wait until age 63 to avoid paying taxes. The IUL can be illiquid insofar as you have surrender charges in your policy. These Surrender charges are designed to reduce over the first 10 to 15 years of the policy. However, once those surrender charges abate, you can have full access to your cash by either withdrawing up to your basis or loaning yourself any of the growth on those original contributions. So while neither alternative is perfect in the liquidity department, I'll give the slight edge to the IUL. Next, let's talk about protection. Now, when I say protection, I'm talking protecting against the risk that could derail your financial plan. I'm talking tax rate risk, the risk of premature death and long-term care risk. Now, a Roth IRA is by definition tax-free, so it does a marvelous job of insulating you against tax rate risk. You contribute after tax dollars. You do so at today's historically low tax rates, and when tax rates down the road are likely to be higher than they are today, you get to take that money out tax-free. The IUL is likewise tax-free and enjoys all the same protections as the Roth IRA. So I'm going to call this one a draw. But when it comes to protecting you from premature death or a long-term care uh, event, the IUL clearly comes out ahead. Remember, if you die, your heirs get a death benefit. But if you don't die, if you almost die and end up needing long-term care, most insurance companies will give you your death benefit in advance of your death for the purpose of paying for long-term care. So when it comes to protection, no doubt in my mind that the IUL comes out ahead. Finally, let's talk about expenses. Most Roth IRAs are purchased in the form of a mutual fund. So to understand a Roth IRA's expenses, you have to understand the fees in a typical mutual fund. According to thebalance.com, expenses vary based on the sector you're investing in, but a balanced mutual fund portfolio might cost you about 1% of your balance per year. The expenses in the IUL work a bit differently, particularly if it's structured in the right way. Those expenses are a little bit higher in their early years, 
but they're much lower in the later years. But when you average them out over the life of the program, they can cost you as little as 1% of your cash value per year. In fact, the longer you keep your IUL, the less expensive it becomes. So on balance, I'd say that the Roth IRA wins in the early years, but the IUL pulls ahead over the long run. So I'll call this one a draw. Okay, now that we've done a comparison of the most important qualities of either account, which one do I think you should utilize in your financial plan? Drum roll, please. The answer is I think you should have both. You should be taking advantage of every nook and cranny in the IRS tax code. I'm talking index universal life, Roth IRA, Roth 401k, Roth conversion, you name it. They all have qualities and attributes that make them unique. They all have their strengths and weaknesses, and they all play an important part in a balanced, comprehensive approach to a tax-free retirement. So whichever strategy you use, it's your money, so you choose wisely.